Well, good, e good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, and fellow councillors, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. It's a great pleasure to welcome you here to the King Edmund Chamber, and uh, we do hope you will enjoy and be uh, indeed uh, become learned over the many things that we'll be discussing today. It gives me great pleasure at this point in the proceedings to move on to point one on your agenda, which is thought for the day. And indeed, great pleasure to uh, introduce to you, and not, not just introduce, as many of you, you will have uh, had the occasion to meet uh, Ian before, great pleasure to introduce and reintroduce the Venerable Ian Morgan, Archdeacon of the County of Suffolk, and uh, for our thought for the day. Thank you so much, Archdeacon. Chairman, councillors, thank you for the invitation uh, to address you. Those of you who were unfortunate enough to witness my previous debacle in this chamber, will know that I am a man of mild manners. Nothing distracts me at all from my purpose, nothing that is except badly worded road signs, <laughs> horse boxes on a Sunday morning, and I can add one more to those. Suffolk's roads are populated by the most extraordinary amount of inappropriate lycra on a Sunday morning. <laughs> I have seen more clad rear ends than you can possibly imagine. So as I say, you'll know that I am a mild-mannered man, I have no hobby horses, there's nothing in particular I wish to rant about apart from that that I'm going to rant about now. Um, I'm, I'm here today to invite you to join me in a campaign. And the campaign is one I feel absolutely passionate about. I cannot believe that in the 21st century, nobody in the recent election addressed this issue. It is fundamental to the well-being of our society. It is crucial, it is important, and I am appalled that nobody at any point took any occasion to address this. I'm sure when I share it with you, you will be as outraged as I am that such things still go on in this country in the 21st century. So I'm going to invite you to join me in the campaign to rid us of these. This, ladies and gentlemen of the Suffolk County Council, is a right-handed pastry fork. I have never in my life seen a left-handed pastry fork. This is a symbol of discrimination at the heart of our society. It's an outrage and it's a... Is anybody else left-handed? Yes. Well, I'm not. Which... <laughs> Which just shows you how fabulously inclusive I am. Because I am prepared to campaign on your behalf that we should rid ourselves of these tools of oppression of the left-handed. Are you with me? Splendid. Of course. Why did we invite him again? In the Middle Ages... If you were left-handed, you were not allowed to be ordained priest. Those of you will know that the word sinister is left in Latin. Dexterous is right. Dexter. So left-handed people have always been marked out as odd, weird, difficult and almost impossible to get along with. I say this because our new bishop is left-handed, and if anybody, uh, if anybody tells him I've said this, you're in deep trouble. This is ludicrous. This is absolutely ludicrous, but what was discriminatory so many years ago, which now appears ludicrous, is mirrored just as much in today's society by the ludicrous way we discriminate against others who are different. And I am embarrassed and ashamed to belong to an organisation which legally discriminates against those who are gay. I believe it is wrong. I believe the Church of England sets itself up to be utterly foolish in the way it treats gay people. 
In years to come, I have no doubt whatsoever that such things will be looked on as equally ludicrous as this. Those of us who are in positions of leadership and responsibility have a duty, I believe, to preach and to example tolerance and inclusivity. If what we do is to exclude, if what we do is intolerant, then we can expect that to be reflected by the society which we serve. It's up to us to hold up better standards, not to support ludicrous things like this that will be seen to be ludicrous in years to come. It's up to us to lead on those things which are intrinsically in unpopular in present society and to offer a vision which is inclusive and tolerant. So my challenge to you is that you present as a chamber an inclusive and tolerant Suffolk. A Suffolk that welcomes all, a Suffolk that includes all, and a Suffolk that particularly works for those whom the rest of the society marginalises. It's up to us to lead by example. And if ever you think it's worthwhile excluding somebody because of who they are, then can I encourage you just to think of a right-handed pastry fork and how really stupid that is. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to move you on to point two of uh, the agenda, Chairman's announcements. Could I uh, very briefly direct you to um, the Chairman's engagements, which you may have to hand. I particularly wanted to draw to colleagues' attention. Uh, 20th of March, it was very, very pleasant to be invited, uh, indeed a very pleasant duty to be invited to the Suffolk, Suffolk, Suffolk branch annual general meeting of SAFA. Uh, and uh, it's very good that uh, Lieutenant Colonel Chibnall is with us in the audience today. Thank you so much for coming, Tony, and thank you for your support. May I also draw your attention and thank in so doing, could I thank Councillor Richard Smith on an event on the 26th of April when we went over to Theberton and to see a beautiful parish church there, but in the parish hall, newly decorated and renovated and refurbished, the great honour that was uh, paid not only uh, to, to Doughty Wiley at the VC, but we also had the opportunity to think very deeply about those who made the supreme sacrifice. May I thank you, Richard, for the, uh, the whole day. It was very, very good, and we were honoured to have uh, our new Lord Lieutenant, and indeed His Excellency, the Turkish Ambassador, was present. Thank you for that. I also wanted to point out to colleagues as well on the 9th of May, uh, Victory in Europe VE Day, 70th anniversary commemoration, uh, a very, very noteworthy parade and wreath laying, a great honour to represent you all and the people of Suffolk there, as it is at all these events and as it has been throughout my year. Uh, so that, of course, was a, a good commemoration. There have been so many throughout the year as we remember and commemorate uh, our fallen dead, heroes and everyone else involved uh, throughout this period, of course, which we're now concentrated on right the way through the several years from now as well. May I also thank uh, the Worshipful the Mayor of Ipswich, who has always extended to me the greatest courtesy 
and has always made me welcome at the many occasions I've had the honour to support his charities, to support both he and his wife in the great job that he has done in, uh, in the mayoralty for Ipswich. It's a great honour that that has been the case this year, ladies and gentlemen. And indeed, uh, I believe on the 18th of May, it was my first opportunity, because I'm, I live out in the sticks, as people know, I was able to get to the Maharani Indian restaurant and truly enjoyed the evening, and we were able to raise money for the Worship for the Mayor's Charities, which, uh, which has been a great success throughout the year. So thank you, Bill. Thank you very much indeed for that. Might I also indulge you, ladies and gentlemen, on the 20th of May, yesterday, I had the honour to be uh, with, with our colleague, Councillor Brown from Haverhill. It was a great pleasure. I was able to share uh, a taxi with him and to go in and see Her Majesty and indeed enjoy the Royal Garden Party. A great honour. Thank you so much on behalf of all the staff here at the county for so doing, but to go along and enjoy the garden party. The weather smiled on us, Tony. It was a great day, great company, and uh, wonderful to see the palace and London at its best. A great day as well. Uh, that's, that's my only announcements for that, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I'd like to move us on, if we could now, to point three. There are some further announcements that we need to bring to your attention. Um, could I remind colleagues and, and members in the uh, audience as well, you please turn your phones on to silent or vibrate and please ensure that your voting cards colleagues are properly inserted uh, should we require them. It is with great sadness that I draw to your attention uh, the death of someone who was very active in my division of Kesgrave and Rushmere St Andrew, namely uh, Matthew Percy. Uh, Matthew was a very young man and an active supporter of the Labour Party who, who we lost over the last month. Um, on, and indeed, we lost him on April the 20th. I know, like me, many of you would have met Matthew in his role as a member of the United Kingdom Youth Parliament. He was a very assiduous attender of this meeting here. Indeed, he asked questions on the last occasion. But not only that, he would very frankly come up to me and say, you chaired that well, Christopher, or I wish I could have asked a question, or he would always give me his point of view, very frankly and very friendly. It's a great tragedy when someone dies, but particularly when one dies so young, because you'll never quite know what, what heights they could have, could have raised. Obviously, there are difficulties as well in life, but our thoughts are with his family, his mother particularly, and the other young children. So I, I do ask colleagues to be aware of that, that another little light has gone out in, in, in our lives. Thank you. Um, he was an impressive young person and was committed to making a difference, which, of course, we all try to do. In 2000, uh, Matthew stood for election as the Labour candidate for one of the Kesgrave seats on Suffolk County Council against me and was one of the youngest candidates in the country, not only the county. He attended our own council as recently as March, and has also attended scrutiny committee meetings to get young people's voices a firmer footing and to be heard. He was a serving member of Kesgrave Town Council. He was 21 when he passed away, and one of the youngest councillors in Suffolk. I'd like the council to join me, perhaps, in a minute's uh, silence as a mark of respect, and could you please be upstanding accordingly? Thank you.
Thank you, colleagues. Turning now to by-election results, Haverhill Kangle, I'm very pleased to indeed uh, re-welcome newly elected Councillor Tim Marks back to his place in the chamber today. Well done, Tim. I know it for a fact, Tim, that you have been missed very sadly by colleagues in the absence since 2013, and we all trust that you will enjoy your return to the county and the contribution that you'll be intending to make. Thank you so much and congratulations. Moving on to the Rosper Silver Award for Occupational Health and Safety. The Council has made a successful submission to Rosper, the Royal Society for the Prefe Prevention of Accidents, and in June we will receive a silver award in occupational health and safety for the second consecutive year. Well done. This award is a credit to the hard work across all areas of your county, Suffolk County Council, over recent years. The Council is seeking to continually improve the safety, health and well-being of all staff, clients and all others who come into contact with our Council. A positive and improving health and safety culture needs to be at the core of every organisation and indeed our County Council is no exception to that. Congratulations to Paul Butcher and his team for enabling this Council to receive such well-deserved recognition. Thank you. It is with sadness that I have to announce to you that some senior staff are leaving today. Andrew Gutteridge, Assistant Director of Highways and Transport, will be leaving Suffolk County Council on the 31st of May after a little over 25 years' service. Andrew joined the Highways team as a Group Manager for Maintenance in 1990 and has served in several highways and transport roles. He was appointed into an assistant director role in 2006 and has therefore been one of the Council's long-standing senior managers. I'm sure that many colleagues in the Chamber will have worked with Andrew over recent years and will want to join me in thanking him for his professional service to this Council and to wish him well for his future. Thank you. That concludes items under point two. It now gives me great pleasure to move us on to point three in your agenda, presentation to SAFA. This part I'm looking forward to. Thank you.
Thank you for your support, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> we now move on to uh, item number four in your agenda. Apologies for absence. Uh, from whom did we receive apologies? Ah, I'll let you know. <laughs> there we go. Jolly good. Apologies for absence have been received from the uh, following members. Kathy Bowl, Peter Byatt, Councillor Derek Hackett, and Bert Poole. Are there any other apologies for absence? Yes, Sandy. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. I had to have to report that uh, Councillor Brownie Rudkin had to go into hospital this morning with a suspected torn tendon in her knee. Please extend to her best wishes should you see her, Sandy. So sorry to hear that. Thank you. Are there any other apologies for absence? Yes, Councillor Wood. Councillor Richard Kemp, thank you. Any other apologies for absence, colleagues? Thank you so much. Right, I, I, we're now moving on to uh, item number five. That's declarations of interests and dispensations. Do, uh, I haven't received any to date. Do we have any to be declared now? Thank you. We now move on to item number six, minutes of the previous meeting. Agenda item six, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, is the minutes of the meeting held on the 19th of March 2015. Is that a point of order, Councillor McGregor? Splendid. I invite you to speak now. Uh, Chairman, yes, on page 14 of the penultimate paragraph, uh, this is the, the debate on, on size wall, etc., Reference was also made to roads infrastructure and rail and bus services and the support EDF had given publicly to the Four Villages Bypass. There's been no public support from EDF for the Four Villages Bypass. I think it means to say Suffolk support for the Four Villages Bypass. A significant uh, alteration, I think, Chairman. Shall I raise it? Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Um, is it the will of the Council that we accept uh, Councillor McGregor is putting forward there is in effect an amendment uh, a, a sort of open outcry for that I think Guy that, that's accepted thank you for your support unless I hear to the contrary colleagues I'll take those minutes as read is that agreed anyone saying no thank you We now move on to item number seven on your agenda papers, everyone. Uh, this is the item for public questions. There being no questions from members of the public, I shall move directly on to agenda item number eight. We now move on to item number eight, a most important uh, part of our meeting today, that being the election of chairman. Now, <clears throat> before I invite nominations for my successor, I would like to take the opportunity to say a few words about my year in office. I do hope you'll be able to hear me. I, I don't want to use the Tommy talker. Okay.
Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I also wanted to say that uh, before we now move to the election, which is next, Tim, that we have to consider, isn't it? I wanted to wish whomsoever uh, we place in this role, we do all of us send them our best wishes for a successful year, a prosperous year, a healthy year, and to represent our county in the best light. Thank you. We ask for nominations for election to the office of Chairman of Suffolk County Council for the municipal year 2015-16. Thank you. Councillor Chambers. Mr Chairman, it gives me great pleasure to propose Councillor Jane Storey as the next Chairman of Suffolk County Council. Jane was elected to this council back in January 2002 and the ensuing 13 and a half years has never stopped being a tireless local councillor, as well as a cheerful and friendly face around our offices, as well as around our county. For a great amount of that time, she has also served as a cabinet member for finance or resource management, and also for eight years as deputy leader of the council. Coming in, coming in as I did in 2005, Jane was for many years an ever-present fixture at the heart of the council, keeping a careful eye on our finances, but also being someone we could talk to if we had any issues. She was deputy leader for both Jeremy Pembroke and Mark B, and in, her time as leader of, uh, and in their time as leader of the council. And both of them have vouched for her steady, reassuring support, her enthusiasm for the work to carry, that you needed to carry out, and indeed her friendship. Now, I think most of us um, are aware of Jane's love of four-by-four four cars, and this is matched, um, perhaps exceeded by, her love of her dear, sweet Rottweiler dogs. I like to think that her experience in handling her Rottweilers leaves her well-placed to handle our council meetings. <laughs> Although I hasten to add that um, this chamber happil happily seldom sees Rottweiler behaviour. Although sometimes... <laughs> oh, I think you've just stolen my line! <laughs> Although we do sometimes experience the odd chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, um, and ser seriously, I don't think people, um, many of you know about Jane's commitment to being a corporate parent. Um, I know we all take our responsibilities as a corporate parent very seriously, but Jane actually opens her home to teenagers when they most need a roof over their head, giving not only them a safe place to sleep, but much needed support in difficult times in their lives. Nothing could emphasise her capacity for following up a commitment with, um, with that practical action and where it matters most, making a real difference to the quality of life of someone, some of our most vulnerable young people. I know that Jane will fulfil her role with the same passion and dedication that she gave as a Cabinet member, as well as being a wonderful ambassador for our, our county. Mr Chairman, fellow members... I'm pleased to be able to propose Councillor Jane Storey as our next chairman and hope you will support her nomination. Thank you very much, Councillor Chambers. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Finch. Mr Chairman, I am also honoured to be able to second this proposal for Councillor Jane Storey to be our next chairman of this council. I've actually only known Jane since 2009, when I became a councillor. But since then, our, parts, our paths have coincided on many occasions. And I have always admired her enthusiasm that she brings to every role she has taken, to which Councillor Chambers has referred. More recently, Jane has been a member of the Scrutiny Committee. Indeed, she was my vice chairman for a year. Her experience as a Cabinet member made her clearly a most suitable member with the depth of knowledge of how much she knew about this Council. Some may even say that she is a gamekeeper turned poacher. Her incisive questioning of witnesses so often resulted in drawing up some solutions to so many knotty problems we covered, 
which the committee were pleased to pass back to Cabinet for future consideration as our recommendations. Now, outside the Council, Jane and I have also have another joint interest as members of the Suffolk Agricultural Association, of which she is a, a life member. We both annually support an important program, their school, farm and country fair, along with more than 150 other members. This fair helps young people understand and have a greater understanding how their food is produced and from where it comes. Through this association with the SAA, she is widely known and is held in great respect by the farming industry throughout the whole county. In summary, Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I endorse that all has been said by the proposer and I have no hesitation whatsoever in wanting to second this proposal for Jane to be our chairman for this coming year and which I urge all councillors to support. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Councillor Finch. Now, do I have any other nominations for the position of chairman? Thank you. There being no other nominations, can I ask the council to indicate their approval? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. I'm now very, very pleased to announce that Councillor Jane Storey is duly elected as chairman of the County Council for Suffolk for the municipal year 2015-2016. Well done, Jane. I now invite Councillor Storey to join me to receive the badge of office. Thank you. I, Jane Storey, having been elected to the office of Chairman of the Council, hereby declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. I undertake to be guided by the Council's code of conduct in the performance of my functions in that office. Um, ladies and gentlemen and uh, distinguished visitors, um, I do feel very honoured and I hadn't realised I was so good. <laughs> <laughs>
um, to have been elected as your chairman for, the, for this next year. Um, I'm sorry, I'm feeling a bit emotional now. I, um, it was, I hadn't realised that Lisa knew so much about me. Um, I have greatly enjoyed the role of, of vice chairman and have admired extremely the uh, panache and style that Christopher has brought to the role. I've also uh, greatly admired uh, Anne in her role as consort. She always looks so stylish. She always looks so stylish and and well turned out. And what a gracious, lovely lady she is. Um, Both have been a real credit to the role and I have learned a lot from them. Uh, As you will see from the list of engagement that engagements that Christopher puts out uh, before each council meeting he has been uh, an extremely busy chairman and so really as vice chairman I haven't really had that much to do Um, but uh, I have learnt a lot um, from both uh, he and Anne and also the rest of the chain gang and I include uh, Councillor Quinton in that, he's been so kind and and really lovely to to get to know Um, As regards this next year, I would just like to say uh, a couple of things about uh, about how I I want to do things. Uh, The first thing is I'm not keen on repetition and faffing about. Um, So let's try and keep to the point. And if you can't say something new in a debate, please think about not saying anything at all. I will... uh, The second thing is I will ping the bell. Um, There you go. Uh, uh, 30 seconds before your allotted time is up. I won't interrupt you unless it looks as if you're settled in for the night, but please take it as a hint. And the third thing is, um, I do like food and and conversation, Uh, so lunches before full council will be changing format. There will be a proper lunch, uh, not a buffet, with tables... (laughs) I knew you'd appreciate it, Richard. (laughs) With, with tables to sit at um, and uh, probably no speaker. Um, I'm hoping that we can all enjoy a chance to chat with, it, with our fellow councillors and also senior officers in a nice, relaxed atmosphere. I know that several councillors have felt uncomfortable with the, with the existing arrangement and I hope that they will give this new arrangement a try. Um, I'm particularly looking forward to a chance to chat to, to Councillor Nettleton over lunch rather than in Tesco's. I'm very much looking forward to this. <laughs> I'm very much looking forward to this next year. I'm particularly welcoming back uh, counsel, to our council chamber our colleague Peter Byatt. Uh, I am sure we all miss his presence, and um, all in our own way, of course. But uh, we do miss him. Um, I have nominated two charities to support over this next year, the Addington Fund and SARS, which is Suffolk Accident Rescue Service. The Addington Fund is a registered farming charity, and their main area of work is to provide homes for farming families living in England and Wales who have to leave the industry through no fault of their own, and by doing so will lose, lose their home possibly something like a a tenant farmer that loses the tenancy. In times of emergency, they also assist with a grant towards certain business costs. It was started way back in early 2001 by the Reverend Richard Addington, uh, hence the name, uh, vicar of Tostock, Norton and Pakenham. So Joanna probably remembers him as well. Uh, He also happens to be the vicar that married me and Chris, uh, my husband. Uh, late husband. He set up the fund to help farmers that had been affected by the foot and mouth epidemic, but it had no name. But uh, it was Canon Sally Fogden who actually named it um, after him, something that he was highly embarrassed about. It has gone from providing financial assistance and probably emotional assistance as well um, to farmers at the outbreak of the foot and mouth mouth crisis in 2001 to being part of a nationwide charity now that provides housing and assistance in times of emergency. It also provides housing to, uh, to those who are related to the agricultural industry, for example, vets. And I think uh, Va- uh, Valerie Hill was telling me that it had been on Country File recently. Um, so that's, uh, that's good. 
Suffolk Accident Rescue Service was formally launched on the 1st of May 1972. Since then, many thousands of patients have been treated by SARS doctors uh, uh, and paramedics. They're volunteers and countless lives have been saved. So far, SARS volunteers have attended over 16,000 incidents around Suffolk and the wider East of England region. That equates to one incident attended by a SARS doctor or paramedic every day for the last 43 years. All this has been achieved without charge to the patient, the ambulance service or the taxpayer and it has been funded by voluntary grants and donations from the local community. In 2015, they aim to grow the number of SARS solo responders in areas of Suffolk where they currently lack coverage. Dr Andy Mason is the Honorary President of SARS and lives in Norton, one of the villages that I represent. Both charities are probably ones that you may have heard of, but not what I would call mainstream. But they have a local link to me and to Suffolk. I will be inviting people from each charity to provide a thought for the day, so I'm sure you'll find out more about each charity as the year progresses. On a personal note, I'd like to thank my family and friends for their support, and that includes my friends and colleagues in RM. You know who you are. <laughs> Especially today, I'd like to thank my brother-in-law, Steve, for bringing my mother along to the meeting. It's my mother in the, in the um, black and white check jacket up there. <laughs> um, as some of you will know, I've been renovating a house in Mulpit for the last six months, and I'm sure she will have the sympathy of every one of you when I tell you that I and my, do and my two dogs, my two Rottweilers, as you now know, um, have been staying with her over that time. So I'd just like to thank her for putting up with us all and to say that I will be gone soon. <laughs> So now I think it's time to get on with the meeting. Thank you very much. Moving on to uh, agenda item number nine, uh, the election of vice chairman. I now need to invite nominations for election to the office of vice chairman of the county council for 2015-16. Thank you, Councillor Spicer. Would you wish to speak? Thank you, Chairman. And the great pleasure, of course, is being the first to congratulate you on your election as Chairman. Um, and, and thank you for the alluding to me. I, I crave some extra indulgence before I talk about my nomination because Jane's talked about the Addington Fund. When the Reverend Richard Addington came to be the vicar of Norton, Pakenham and Tostock, um, where Jane and I are, um, he came, I think, from... I'll, I'll remember the name of the parish church as soon as I sit down. I think it was in the Gainsborough area of Ipswich. And he spent a lot of time in the first two years telling us that we in these rural villages didn't realise how lucky we were. We were privileged, spoilt and everything else, and real life was in Ipswich and we should be getting out there. It was very interesting how he recognised over a period of time the deprivations and challenges that existed in rural areas, entirely different, but he did. But we linked up... Is there a church called St Francis in Ipswich? No, it'll come to me in a minute. Um, so there was that nice link, Jane, to the, adding to, to the Reverend Richard um, Addington. Um, and so many congratulations uh, to you and, and the family all, all here. Um, and I, I think that probably on this side, I was the only councillor that was here when you arrived um, in a by-election in quite sad circumstances, and, and your courage and diligence has been admired ever since. Colleagues, today I would like to propose Councillor Colin Spence to be Vice-Chairman of this Council for the forthcoming year. Colin has been in local government for his entire working life. And actually, what most of you may not know, he's now entering his 40th year as a councillor. Can anybody beat that? No. 40th year as a councillor, having been elected to Baber District Council in 1976. Prior to that, he was working for Suffolk County Council. And I first met Colin in 1989, uh, when he was a senior manager then in County Council Shire Hall in Bury St Edmunds. And he was given the job of briefing me, the new Vice Chairman of Social Services, 
on what, the job was all, what his job and what social services was all about. Um, he was very thorough, very patient, very kind, but then completely befuddled me by whispering to me at the end, I'm a Conservative councillor too. Uh, so I look very taken aback, but um, I like to think we have been um, good friends and good colleagues ever since. Um, Colin will bring immense experience of public life right across Suffolk, um, uh, being vice chairman. He will also bring huge experience and wisdom to support Jane in her role um, as chairman. I can speak, say this with absolute um, confidence because um, Colin and I have worked together in the public sector in many different ways. Um, firstly, when he became a board member at the Suffolk Health Authority, where I was the chairman in, I think, about 1997, 1998, he was my vice chairman at West Suffolk um, Primary Care Trust. He was chairman of Suffolk Police Authority when I was a member, and, of course, you've all known him over the last four years as chairman of our Fire and Rescue um, Authority. In civic life, he's actually spent three years as chairman of Baber District Council. So from that, you will see that he brings a wealth of experience, but also I'm very confident of the support he will give to Jane. Um, he's held in huge respect and affection by the people of Sudbury East. I must remember to say the East. Sudbury East and Waldringfield. Most importantly, he's wonderfully supported and looked after by Jeanette, and it's lovely that she's here today. Um, Colin hasn't been well lately, and actually we're thrilled he's here today. I thought I'd have to make this speech and ask him to watch it on Ipswich Spy later this evening. But you're here um, to hear us today, and we do wish you well. I know you, you're tackling your health problems in a, in a new way. Um, so, Chairman, it gives me um, very much pleasure to propose Colin Spence and hope that it will have the support of everybody here. Thank you, Councillor Spicer. Do I have a seconder for the nomination, please? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I am very happy to um, second the nomination of, uh, of Colin Spence uh, to be the next Vice Chairman of the County Council. Uh, and um, conscious of the fact that I should not be repeating anything that's been said before, will be brief, um, but I would like to echo uh, uh, what uh, Councillor Spicer has said. Uh, I've only known Colin since 2011, when I was elected uh, in a by-election to the County Council, uh, but I've had the privilege of working with Colin um, as his assistant uh, cabinet member uh, for public protection in the last year. And I can only say four words, fair, even-handed, dedicated and respected. And that sums up Colin Spence, and I'd be very happy to support this nomination. Thank you, Councillor Reid. Are there any, any other nominations from members? Uh, there being no further nominations, I'm pleased to announce that Con Councillor Colin Spence is duly elected Vice Chairman of the County Council for, the, for this coming municipal year. I invite Councillor Spence to join me to receive the badge of office.
Yeah, I'll be okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, yes. I call in Michael Spence. Having been elected to the office of Vice Chairman of the County Council, hereby declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. I undertake to be guided by the Council's Code of Conduct in the performance of my functions in that office. Should we have that? I haven't, dated, I haven't dated it. Madam Chairman, can I also congratulate you? Um, I won't say very much at all, but I would just like to say that I give you uh, absolute assurance that I will support you every step of the way uh, during this uh, forthcoming year and represent the County Council um, in the very best way that I can. I thank the Council for its support. I thank my proposer and my seconder for their kind words and I look forward to actually serving the Council in this new role. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Spence. Uh, we now come on to item 10, election of the Leader of the Council. It is now my duty to ask for nominations for election to the Office of Leader of County Council until the annual meeting in 2017. Mm. Councillor Goldson. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Could I propose Councillor Colin Newble? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Goldson. Do I have a seconder for the... For the, for the, for the uh, proposal. Councillor, Councillor Hudson. Thank you. Congrat many congratulations, uh, Councillor Story, Mr. Mr. Madam Chairman. Thank you so much indeed. Congratulations, and I hope you enjoy the year. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to second for the position of leader of Suffolk County Council my colleague, Councillor Colin Noble. I've just had a word with Colin. He just reminded me of asking for some of the symbols of his old school, King's Ely, a fine, a fine school. And he told me there were three keys on there. And I know that he will represent the three, three main keys that we need in this county. Principles, integrity, and honesty. That's why I'm very happy to second him. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hudson. Are there any other nominations from members? There being no other nominations, we will move to the vote. Press 2 to vote in favour, 3 to vote against, and 4 to abstain. I will now start the vote. Everybody voted? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the result is? Hmm? I can't see. 37 in favour. 31 against. Right. I'm pleased to announce that Councillor Colin Noble is duly elected leader of the County Council until the annual meeting in in 2013, sorry, 17. <laughs> We're going backwards. <laughs> Apologies for knocking my, my name off. I uh, couldn't see what the result of the, uh, the vote was. Uh, Councillor Noble. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. And at the risk of repetition, may I offer my congratulations as well? I remember many years ago that uh, I was your assistant. Um, in finance and I remember the breadth and depth of your knowledge and I know that will carry you through your year. Um, I'd also like to offer my congratulations to Councillor Spence. 40 years a councillor. A dream or a nightmare? No, I don't know. So that's, um, that's quite something, Colin. I'm very impressed with that as well. And I'd also like to offer um, my thanks to Christopher uh, for his year um, and uh, the way in which you have conducted and carried that year out. And no doubt, as you see Christopher sitting here, I will probably have a few more words to say at some point. Um, I would also like to thank Councillor B. Um, 
Mark and I's differences are probably over-publicised and, and reasonably well known, but what people don't know so much is about the things that him and I have agreed with over the years. And when Mark became the leader, we were in quite a difficult place, and he got us back, and he smoothed that, and he actually, I think, got us a little more in step with how people felt and in Suffolk. Um, he has led um, a very difficult time we had in terms of HR, uh, and he, he led the process that brought us Deborah, so that, that was excellent as well. Um, and equally, uh, equally um, this county has truly led on broadband. And when you talk to the business community, they fully understand and agree that Mark has led a process where we are behind the fourth utility and we are at the forefront of counties delivering that. And Mark was, was central to that. So my thanks to Mark uh, for all his hard work and diligence over those four years. Now, Mark and I share something else in common. We're both Suffolk born and bred. Um, I am also once, twice and always a Lakenheath boy. My childhood on a Saturday afternoon was spent in the new, shows how long ago it was, the new Portman Road stand uh, watching the town. And my childhood holidays were spent at our holiday home in Felixstowe, then some two hours away from where we actually lived, and I thoroughly enjoyed my holidays there. Um, I literally went to school in the back of a builder's van. And growing up at the dinner table, there were two things that were talked about, community and business. And when we did well, we celebrated that. And when we did badly, and when there was recession, I remember hushed conversations by the adults, not only talking about our business, but talking about the effect on the lives of the people who worked with us, the men and women who worked with us in that community. And they are the two central things, as I grew up, was about that community. Um, I think there is a certain Suffolk way. I think we're proud when we do things right. I think that we are careful in how we plan. We need to communicate and talk with our communities. But we're open to changing things, open, open to altering how we go about our business. And you know what? For all the savings that are having to be made, this is an immensely exciting time in local government. We have devolution on the agenda. And that isn't just about us working with the districts and boroughs, that's about us working across the whole of the public sector, from the CCGs, the hospitals, DWP, and the fire service and the police service, about the whole public sector in Suffolk. And I think that is going to be an extremely exciting time to be in local government. Now, it's often said that I occasionally mentioned what got me into being a councillor. I don't know why, but something to do with council tax, I seem, seem to recall. But I am... <laughs> I haven't done it yet. <laughs> but I am equally proud to serve the community who elected me. And I haven't met a councillor yet that doesn't approach this from that point of view. We're all here to serve the communities that elected us. And one of the things that I've thought about as I come into this role is around some of the things that we do here, from the PDPs to the scrutiny committees, how the localities work. And I've already spoken to the other group leaders that we want to sit down. This is not about party politics. This is about us as councillors and how we can make this organisation be more effective for us and some of those things about how our voice as councillors is heard, not only here, and how it influences our communities. And that's something that I want to work on and as I say, that's not about party politics, that's about us as councillors being effective in our communities. Now, one of the things that is tradition at these moments is the announcement of the Cabinet. There is a broad hint here, there is a broad hint of who they are, but I will just run through the various roles. Um, and if you haven't seen these Dangling Day Times this morning, then this will all come as a surprise to you. But if you have, you, you might have seen one or two aspects of it. So, joining me as the Deputy Leader um, and Cabinet Member for Ipswich is going to be Christopher Hudson. I've heard a lot said about Ipswich and the fact that we don't have councillors on the Conservative side elected, but we are focused on Ipswich. Um, and whether you think that we have been successful in some of the things, there are 
a lot of money, and recently some £21 million has been invested in the town because we are as committed as anybody to Suffolk being successful, and that includes our county town of Ipswich being successful. Yeah. 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 Next, we have Lisa Chambers, who is going to be the Cabinet Member for Education and Skills. Uh, then we have Gordon Jones, who is the Cabinet Member for Children's Services. Uh, then we have, for Cabinet Member for Communities, we have Sarah Stamp. A new position, and the world is changing, and it is right and proper that we change with it. And Tony Golson is going to be the Cabinet Member for Health, and he is going to work across public health, mental health, and also liaison with um, Councillor Dr Alan Murray, who is chairing the Health and Wellbeing Board of Suffolk. Then we have uh, Councillor Becky Hoffensberger, who is going to be the Cabinet Member for Adult Care. Next, James Finch is going to be the Cabinet Member for Highways and Transport. And then we have Matthew Hicks, who is going to be the Cabinet Member for Environment and Public Protection. And last but not least, we have Councillor Richard Smith, who is going to be the Cabinet Member for Finance. And over the past sort of five or six weeks, I've had the opportunity to sit down and have one-to-ones with most of my group. And we've talked about what are our policies, how are we influencing the things that we want to see happen in Suffolk, and who is right for those roles, and some of the aspirations that people have. And if you actually look at my new cabinet team, you will find that they are drawn from every borough and every district across Suffolk. And that is what we're here to do. It is to represent the whole of Suffolk. And we will make a particular point of our, dis of our cabinet being in Bury, being here, and being at the great new Riverside Centre. So wherever we are, we will represent Suffolk. We may not have a councillor from Ipswich in the cabinet, but we are immensely focused on Ipswich as well. Now, We've recently, three weeks ago, on a Thursday, we had an election. And at that election, we elected a conservative majority government. In Suffolk, we elected seven conservative MPs. And the two, what would be described as marginal seats here in Ipswich and over in Waveney, we doubled. We didn't increase, we doubled our majority. And I think there are some clear messages coming out from this. Firstly, at the national level, I think quite frankly, quite simply, I think people have taken the message that at some point this country must return to a position where it is spending less than it raises in taxes. Not a complicated proposition, quite frankly, and that is what people have voted for because that is what the Conservative government has said they will deliver. Now, more locally, all of the district and boroughs, with the exception of Ipswich, the Conservatives have either retained and increased their majority, or they have a strong majority, or in the case of Baber, we have taken it for the first time. Yeah, yeah. And in every single one of those, the premise on the doorstep was low or zero council tax increases. And actually, you can go a little deeper than that. You can go and look at the referendum that took place in Bedford. The Police and Crime Commissioner proposed in a referendum to increase the police precept by 15%. And that was to raise £4.35 million for 140 new frontline police officers. Not council staff, 140 frontline police officers. And the people voted. 91,000 people voted in favour of that, and 207,000 people voted against it. And to my mind, that sends a very clear signal. It is about doing what you've got to do, but doing it within the confines of the money you have available to you. So the message, to my mind, is quite clear. People want administ conservative administrations, and they do not want to return to the malaise of Labour's policies. Now, what does that mean for the council? We talk about devolution. And we talk about how we're going to work across the public sector. But what does that actually mean for this council here? And we have undoubtedly got to make additional savings. We all know the financial outlook. We've been through the budget. We know the savings over the next year. 
We know that the Chancellor is going to be doing another budget in July, and I think it is all reasonable to assume that that isn't going to mean there is more money for us. In fact, that probably means there's going to be less money for us. So do we salami slice our way back? Do we just salami slice the services? Do we use the reserves to prop up unsustainable services and then one day have to write a note, there is no more money, and then start raising the council tax? Is that what we're going to do? Or are we going to live within our means? And I think we can look at our track record, because in our track record, there are some incredibly transformational things that we have done. The library service is a classic example. 30% less spend from us, and every single library still open. That is how you do this thing. If you redesign how you deliver something, if you change the nature of the delivery, if you simplify processes, what you are doing is you are protecting services. Not cutting service, you are protecting services because you're doing precisely the things you need to do to protect those services. And we must also listen to our communities. And one of the things I want to do and I want to see change is I want to see us change the way in which we interact with our communities. I want us to webcast this chamber. I want us to webcast our meetings. I want to make us more accessible. I want us to be more accessible on social media. And one of the things I want to do is I want to get out there. So every other Saturday, I'm going to be out in a high street somewhere in Suffolk with some officers and with some information and talk to people how they can get involved. I want the Suffolk 1000 to become Suffolk 10,000. And I want us to be interacting. So come and join me. I'll publish the dates in the next couple of days. And wherever I am, it doesn't matter whether you're a Conservative, UKIP, Liberal, Labour, e even, even Green. And it's so good you're still here. That's excellent, Mark. That's marvellous to see you. So, so. Come and join me. And let's get out there and let's talk to the people of Suffolk and understand what they value. Because there's no doubt, when you read things like Suffolk says your verdict, when you look at the Mori, people generally have an opinion. They generally want to tell you what they think. They generally want to tell you what they value, and we must reflect that in how we go about our business. Madam Chairman, I have a passionate belief that it is possible for this council to protect services and make the savings we are required to make. Not Labour dogma, that has got this country in such a mess, but conservative pragmatism about how we go about delivering services. Talking with residents, listening to what they value, and working with our partners and communities, that is the conservative way. That is our group's way. And that is why this conservative group are the right people to lead Suffolk now and in 2017. Thank you. Yes.